I'm John Breyer, KG4AKV, and this is the equipment that I use to listen to the International Space Station, and I just want to go over it in a systematic way. Okay, first thing, my antenna. I actually don't have the boom, but these are the elements, and this is the bag that they go in. So there's three elements. You've got the uh, longest elements, which go on the back of the boom, closest to where you hold it. You've got the, uh, and so that's called the reflector. This is called the, this is the middle elements, the coax feeds into this. This is the driven element, and then you've got the director, and these are the shortest. So it's longest, long, short. <laughs> Okay, and this also has space for the 70 centimeter elements, which are actually on the boom right now, and the boom is out in my car. So, so that's how this works. It's a great little um, protective and um, holding device for the antenna. And it's an Arrow 2 antenna, and I actually have another one in the package still, slightly different version, it's called a backpacker version. And I have yet to open it, as I said. I'll show that to you as well. Okay, this is the uh, Arrow 2, and it's the backpacker version. And the reason it's backpacker is because the boom is split. So there's this uh, mechanism or this screwing section which allows you to screw, in, into, screw one end into the other end. And you can see it's got all the uh, 2 meter elements right there, and then the 70 centimeter elements are right there. And I also got this duplexer, which allows you to combine the feed point for the 70 centimeter antenna and the 2 meter antenna into one. And the duplexing circuitry is right in here, and that will fit in the back of the handle. It squishes in right there, and then it comes out with one feed point. You see the SMA, I don't know if you can see that, I'm sure you can't, but there's an SMA connector that goes to my HT. And for that, I would use my Kingwood THD72. This is a full duplex radio. That allows me to hear my voice coming on the downlink while I'm transmitting. Most radios won't do that. This is the only current production radio that will HT that will do that. This is the radio I actually use to listen to the International Space Station. And if I'm lucky, I'll talk to them using the microphone. And this is a Kenwood TM261A. And it's a mobile radio, so it requires 12 volts. And this is my 12 volt battery. This is a sealed lead acid battery. It's something I got out of a UPS, actually, an uninterruptible power supply. So if you ever picked up one of those, you know how heavy they are, and this is why the battery is the heavy component of a UPS. One of the first things I use when I get set up is my compass. I don't want to set up anything until I know which direction I'll be pointing my antenna because. Once I know that, I, need, I know how I want to orient all my equipment on the, the bench that I usually use at the park that I usually go to. Okay, and this is the cable, the power cable I use to connect to the terminals of the radio, I mean of the battery, and then this goes to the radio. This is a power pole is what it's called, very common in ham radio. Here's the coaxial cable that goes from the antenna on this end. This is a BNC to PL259 adapter. So that goes to the antenna, and on the other end there's a PL259. This is a 25 foot coaxial cable from DX Engineering, and it goes on to right there, just like that. And I've got this audio cable coming out of the, the radio, which is how I record the audio. And I mentioned in some of my other, other videos that I, I wire that directly into the speaker terminals. That way, um, instead of using the external speaker out, if I use that, it cuts off this speaker, disables that this speaker so I can't hear it as easily. Now, I have to turn the volume down really low because when I connect it to my recorder, and this is my recorder, my audio recorder, which is a Zoom H1, when I connect it to this, I'll get popping, I'll get um, the audio goes so high that it becomes distorted. So, I have to turn that down really low, and then nobody can hear it really, unless you get really close. So, and I've had some problems where I had somebody come out and film for me, and they couldn't even hear it, which I was really kind of embarrassed about, because if they're going to help me film, why would I not be able to allow them to hear that? That's the most important part of the whole thing. So, to resolve that problem, I got a little portable 
speaker. And these are pretty common. It's a little Bluetooth jam audio speaker. And instead of using the Bluetooth, I just use the auxiliary input. And this, I can then crank it up, and then people can hear it, hopefully. I haven't actually tried it with somebody else who's out there, but it, it was a lot louder when I tried it for myself. Okay, so uh, when I feed the audio out of the radio, I usually, I sometimes plug it into this so I can expand to other devices. But I think lately I've just been using this because this has line in or microphone in and it has speaker out so I can monitor it through this without having to go through a, a separate um, multiplexer per se. Here are some audio cables that I have. This one's a special one I made for my, my HTs. The Kenwood HTs have a very small uh, phono connector. You can see this is a normal size. So this is a 3.5 millimeters and this is definitely 2.5 millimeters. I have some miscellaneous adapters here. When I'm using my HT, I have to use uh, this SMA to B and C adapter. Here's my GPS watch. I really don't need a GPS watch. Um, it's just honestly the only watch I have right now. Headphones. Headphones are really important. I need headphones so that I can hear the signal well, so that I can hear the signal drop and come up, and then I can adjust the antenna accordingly. You can really hear the signal in this. There's a hiss if it's weak, and if you hear the hiss, and obviously if you hear the scratchiness, then you need to adjust the antenna. And I don't think there's anything else to go over except for maybe this. This is the printout of the past details and the contact. Today's contact is with the University of Alabama Huntsville Space Hardware Club in Huntsville, Alabama. It's going to be with Tim Copra, KE5UDN. And the contact is a go for today. And it says 1720 UTC, 72 degrees. That's the official information. But I've looked it up since then, and it's actually going to be about 12:16 p.m., which is basically noon. So this is the past details for Huntsville, Alabama, right where their club setup is. And then this is the past details for Raleigh, and it's going to be about a 40-degree pass for us. And I have for Huntsville just the beginning of the pass, the max elevation, or the middle of the pass, and the end of the pass. But for Raleigh, I have. I have the 5 degree also um, in the beginning and the 5 degree in the end and that's just so I can kind of know like where the beginning is so it's harder to pick up there and it's good to know when you're at 5 degrees and when you're at 0 degrees so you can be like alright it went quiet now it's gone I'm confident enough that I don't need to keep listening there's not going to be another transmission and there's some duct tape I use it for my lavalier mic that I connect or I stick right behind my shirt and I tape it there this is the equipment, so I'm going to pack it up now, and I'm going to drive down to the landfill that I normally go to. Okay. This is a backup in case my other radio does not work. I'm going to put this watch on so that I keep track of time right now. Don't need this today. You need this. We'll need to pack up the camera eventually. It goes in here. <laughs> Extra fuse for the power connector for the VHF 2 meter mobile radio, the Kenwood. One time I connected the terminals backwards and luckily only the fuse blew, but it did not have an extra fuse. And now that will never be a problem again because I have extra fuses. Some binoculars that I actually set the radio on top of, but it's also nice to have out there if I want to look around at the uh, surrounding landscape. Oh yes, a voltmeter to test batteries. That's nice to have. <laughs> you can change out batteries if they're low. Okay, antenna, power pole, power cable rather, and battery, microphone. That's it, that's it. We're good to go! <laughs> Let's set it up.